What is up everybody? Welcome to the channel Grimm's Moto Vlogs. Today we have part 5 of the Can We Fix It series with the Yamaha FZ1. But before we get started today, if you like what you've seen with this series so far, please help support me and support the channel by hitting that like button and subscribing for future videos. With that being said, let's get into it. Yeah, we tearing up the streets like we Valentino Rossi. Feeling for adrenaline, we twist on the throttle. Yeah, I'd like to welcome you all to the Grimm's Motor Vlog Channel. Yeah. The Grimm's Motor Vlog Channel. Yeah. Grimm's Motor Vlog Channel. Yeah. All right, so today we're going to go ahead and replace that oil pump water pump and all the gaskets and o-rings associated with that. I hope this fixes it. But today's video is gonna be a little bit different than the previous videos, just because it's super hot today, it's super windy, so I have to keep the garage door shut, and I don't want a bunch of wind blowing debris and you know dust into here when I have the motor open. So, and also this is gonna be a little bit of a time-consuming job, and for those reasons, I'm not gonna do a step-by-step -step video here, I'm just gonna do more of an overview and uh, hopefully you still like it. Uh, so yeah, let's tear into this bike. All right, so the first couple steps I'm gonna take are drain the oil, drain the coolant, and also while those systems are draining, I'm gonna remove the exhaust system so we have access to the oil pan bolts. Use a 17 millimeter to break this drain plug loose. This oil should look pretty clean because it doesn't have hardly any miles on it. Yeah, looks pretty clean. All right, while well, that's draining, we're gonna drain the coolant. All right, next I'm gonna use a little 10 millimeter and pop this drain here for the coolant, which is on the inlet pipe for the water pump. All right, now that's dripping, I'm gonna put the drain plug back in here. Snug it up for now. There's a little copper washer on here that they say to replace. I didn't get one, unfortunately, so hopefully it doesn't leak when we go back together. And after this, I'm going to pop the radiator cap. That way this will drain really fast. And that's funny. Nothing's even coming out. Let me pop the radiator cap. Radiator cap is right here. If you can see. So I'm going to pop that and hopefully coolant will drain out of it. So I'm surprised nothing dripped out yet. <laughs> Pulled the radiator cap and now she's draining. Now that we have no coolant and oil in the system, I want to try and rotate this again and see if we can get that sound. So we definitely still get the noise. All right, well, that's good to know. So we'll continue on by removing the exhaust now. Okay, so my exhaust is aftermarket and I don't believe mine has the X up valve in it anymore. From what I can see, it does not. So I'm gonna take this loose and pull off the slip on portion of it. And then I will get into the uh, header and remove the head bolts. From what I can see, like I said, I do not see the X up valve, which is the exhaust valve in here. Um, so if you have that on your bike, you'll have extra steps. And now we will come up here and remove this bolt here. All right, there was 
a nut and washer and then a bolt. And there we go, slip on is off. All right, now with every part I take off, I am putting aside with all the bolts and everything together. That way I don't lose anything and I keep track of where everything goes. A lot of spider webs in here. All right, let's move on to the header. So I'm gonna have to pull these head bolt or the uh, nuts off of here. They don't look very good, kind of rusty. Hopefully they come off pretty easy. Um, that and then I believe this is also holding the exhaust, this bolt right here. So I think we might have to take that loose, but we'll start by doing these ones first and possibly this little radiator mount that's right here has to come loose I think too so we'll start by doing that all right it looks like these are 12 millimeters 12 millimeter nuts all right I think that's the last nut holding it on So what I want to do is try and take this back bolt loose now just so I keep something up here holding it somewhat on so it doesn't just drop out on me. Now we're going to try and take this bolt loose. Go to the other side and take this other bolt free then the exhaust should come out as you can see in here there is a bolt that holds the exhaust on through this hole so i'm gonna take that one loose now and hopefully this exhaust just doesn't fall out on me but it, it might exhaust drop free let's pull it off go to the other side we've got our one nut up here holding it all together still and let's pull that and remove this old exhaust all right and i just realized there is an o2 sensor on here and I definitely did not bring my O2 sensor tools. I know that. So hopefully we can find the connector and just disconnect it and pull the whole thing out. So that's what I'm gonna look for here next. Okay, so it's definitely gonna be easier to just break the um, O2 sensor free. It did take a little bit of force, but I did get it. So just when we go back together, we're gonna have to pre-wind these wires. That way they don't get tangled when we uh, reassemble it so pull this out I'm gonna tuck this out of the way and then we can get to our oil pan okay I got the bike up on a stand now in the front just to give me any extra room I can get underneath here because I'm gonna have to do this whole thing on my back and as a mechanic I know how fun that is not fun at all so um, I'm gonna go in and take a little break because it's pretty hot. I'm sweating pretty dang bad. And, uh, ooh, man, is that an oil leak? That might just be from the chain. Looks kind of greasy. Um, I'll have to clean that oil pan up. So, um, yeah, but now we're gonna start tearing apart underneath here once I get back from a little bit of break to cool off so and uh, I think we're gonna have to pull apart a lot of this stuff too with the um, cooler and uh, stuff like that so uh, this should be pretty fun all right back from break first let's go ahead and take out this oil uh, level sensor right here which is gonna be two eight millimeter bolts and then we'll also have to pull this bolt out on the oil pan because it has a bracket that holds the wiring loom for this sensor. So start by cracking these loose. 
And when it comes to the oil pan, the bolts, they say to also remove those in a crisscross pattern, like you've seen in previous videos of mine, uh, to prevent warpage of the oil pan. So first, let's break these free. These are eight millimeters, and they're not too crazy tight. Does not appear that these have Loctite on them. All right, so the sensor might be kind of stuck in here it does have an o-ring let's pop this bowl loose on here too quick okay see that freed up the wiring a little let's see if i can work this out it's wiggling a little flat in here not prying too hard i'm just trying to wiggle it slightly get it to work that seal loose as you can see it's slowly working its way out all right should be able to pull that out of there yep all right all right so there you have it just a little float in here that once it gets to a certain point, it creates a complete circuit, which sends a signal back to the computer to turn the oil light on. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way as well. And uh, yeah, then we'll move on to removing the remaining bolts of this oil pan. All I did to get this out of the way is just run it through this gap here where I ran the O2 sensor and I just have it hanging over here. I'll replace these o-rings and clean it up before we reinstall but for now it's just going to sit over here out of the way all right let's move on to this oil pan all right i don't know how good this camera angle is but i'm going to loosen these bolts now on the oil pan so i loosened this one already i'm gonna go over here and loosen one just kind of going a crisscross pattern you don't have to be perfect but you should try to at least make it as crisscross as possible. Oh man, really? A lot of cobwebs in here. This bolt right here, I cannot get on. Okay, so I cannot get this bolt right here. I cannot get on because this is in the way, which is part of the center stand. So I'm going to have to remove these two bolts, it looks like. And then obviously probably two more bolts on the other side. Yep, so let's lose, remove these two bolts on this side. Yeah, 14. All right. Now let's see if this thing will come loose. There it goes. Now I should be able to use the good old three weights. All right. One side down, I'm gonna pull the other side now.
Now removing these bolts should allow for this to come off of here. Hopefully not with a thud. Go to the other side. stand out of the way now we can access the rest of the oil pan all right back to the oil pan again i do not know how good of an angle this is for recording i can't really check but this is gonna have to be how it's gonna have to be now we have access to this one right here which we could not get to before break that free okay that, that one's loose that one's not loose. That one's loose. Not loose. Loose. Loose now. That should be pretty much all of them. Alright, now I can't tell if one of these doesn't feel like there's anything in there. Yeah, that does not look like there's a bolt or anything in there. They were saying there was a bolt in there. There's no bolt in that one either. That's the weep hole for the coolant, it looks like. Alright, so I think that's all the bolts holding it on. So let's pull the rest of the way out here. I don't know if they have different lengths. So for this case that I don't know, I'm going to lay them out how I pull them off. That way I kind of have an order for how they go. So let's start there. The first part about laying on your back doing a job is your neck. Trying to find a comfortable position for your neck because you're straining it a lot while you're underneath here. And uh, it's not very fun. Looks like these are all the same length. From what I can tell, this should be the last bolt apparently. And we'll see if this pan wants to come off or not. I'm gonna move the camera because I'm not sure if there's gonna be a bunch of oil that's gonna come out of here or not, so. I don't know what the angle looks like, sorry guys, but it's got to be right there. Oh my goodness, that came off a lot faster than I thought it was. <laughs> That's a blooper, got oil everywhere. Alright, hopefully I can soak that up. Alright guys, after that oil pan fell off, the camera actually died because it was so hot. Um, and I almost died because it's so hot. I'm sweating so bad. I've cooled off now, so we'll get back to it. But the camera cut out right after that pan came off. Thankfully, it caught the footage of the pan. So uh, that was a pretty major blooper. I got oil all over me. So, um, but yeah, we'll get back to it. All right, now that the pan is off, I don't have to worry about oil getting all over everything anymore. Um, let's go ahead and take the strainer off. And then we will get to a couple of these other things like this oil tube and then uh, we'll have to take off this piece that goes from the front of the engine for the coolant and also this side tube it looks like we'll have to pull off to where the drain was on. So a few things we got to pull off um, but yeah let's go ahead and do that and then uh, we'll be at the oil pump slash water pump and we'll go from there. Hopefully we can see some damage to that and uh, make this not a waste of time. So, all right, so most of the gasket came off onto the oil pan itself. So I'll have to clean that off. We'll do a little bit of cleaning on this too before we go back together. But I wanna get the oil pump out and then we'll clean all the gasket off. That way we have nice flush space to get everything clean. So, all right. Let's pull off the strainer. Now most of this stuff is going to be Loctited going back together. 
You can tell there's Loctite on those just by how they feel coming off. I'm gonna bunch of oil just started coming out of that now. Wasn't expecting that. Just running it all out everywhere. Let's pull these bolts all the way out and pull this strainer off. Oh, there is a third bolt over here. So this is a little bit different than the R1, because I've watched videos on the R1, and it's the same oil pump, water pump, but the strainer is definitely different, because the strainer on that only has two bolts, and then also there's a chain guard on the R1, which this one does not seem to have. So there's a couple of different differences between this and the R1, it looks like. Similarities, but differences because it is the same motor it's supposed to be, so. All right. Strainer is out. This should just pop out of here. So the O-ring face is down. It looks like there's an O-ring stuck in the oil pump, so there's probably another O-ring, which I'm sure I got. Now, let's pull off the transfer tube over here. I'm expecting to be, have more oil come out of this. Put those together. And next we'll be removing the inlet tube and outlet tube. This is the inlet tube. This is the outlet tube of the cooling system. So we'll remove those. That way we can get the whole pump assembly on out. And that'll be, that'll be the last thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna remove this clamp and this clamp, that way we can get them free and remove this pipe from the water pump. Let's take a little finesse and get that to come off. And I'll probably need a screwdriver to fully get this off. Feels like that's ready to come free. Now let's remove the holder that holds this pipe on. All right, so there's a bolt right here that we're gonna pop loose. started to come free. So here's the pipe right here. As you can see it's come free. Just need to get it off these hoses all the way and then it should come all the way out. I do expect more coolant to come out of this once we get it off. I think it's broke all the way around. Okay, well we got it out of the water pump. So we can get it off of the cooler now. Okay, off of the cooler. So all that's keeping us on here is this hose now. There we go. All right, and that is the other tube holding us up. So now we should be able to pull the water pump out with no hassle. All right, so I actually forgot we have to pull this rod right here, which has a bolt right there. And let's see where that goes. It goes pretty far up into the motor, I can see now. It curls over to this side. So pull that real quick. Now we should be good to pull that out. Throw that in the tub and we'll move on. Now we should be able to pull the pump out itself, which should be one bolt there. And I do not see the other one. Okay, it's all the way over here, kind of hidden. So one there and one there. So I'm gonna do this bolt here first. 
Don't know if that's on the video or not. And this one should have a dowel pan underneath it that clocks this water pump so it stays straight once everything is put in. And hopefully I can get this pin out. I'm honestly not sure how you're supposed to get it out. I don't know if the pump will come out and it'll come with or what. So we're gonna have to just see. All right, that's the first oil pump bolt. I'm hoping the dowel pin just falls right out. Ooh, well, would you look at that? It fell right out. So that's the dowel pin. Perfect. So now, now this is loose. It is now on this side stuck because there's an o-ring there and it goes through the block so we got it free there. I may have to pull this chain. I don't want to damage it trying to get it out so all right I'm gonna pull the there's a chain guide up here and I'm gonna go ahead and pull that real quick so let's do that fast that'll give us a little bit more slack on this chain to get it out. So. All right, so you saw before, this is the chain guide for the chain for the oil pump, water pump. So if we loosen these two, it should give us enough slack to be able to get the rest of this off of here, so. This will only go in one way it has it says up on it literally so when we go back together it should be pretty easy now that should give us enough hopefully enough chain slack to get this out of here so otherwise i guess we could just do this so there's a collar here i ordered a new one of these we're not replacing that now we should have the necessary slack to get this out of here. I'm gonna take us back underneath that way we can get a better view of this. All right, let's get this oil pump out of here. There we go. We got our pump. Let's set it off to the side and uh, we can inspect it further. All right, so here is our oil pump, water pump assembly. And to me, it sounds like our noise is coming from right here on the water pump side. So as this spins, we have coolant being pulled in through this port and the impeller is forcing it out, running out of this port. So this would be the water pump outlet side. And as I spin it here, Sounds like it's coming out of the outlet side of the water pump. Here is the oil pump side. And then again. And I might add that when I turn this and that noise happens, I can feel it in the actual sprocket. It's got a little bit of like a shudder or a vibration-y feel. And also when I put a load on the bearing, it makes the noise constantly. So yeah, I definitely think this is an issue if it takes care of our wine noise, I'm gonna be extremely happy. Okay, now that we have the old pump out, we got a lot of work left to do. We are not even halfway because we gotta clean parts and I'm going to pop this clamp off and drain the rest of the coolant out of this cooler and out of this hose because the coolant that I have to replace this does not mix well with the old coolant. So I might even actually 
run a little bit of water through the system just to make sure I got everything. Then we're going to clean the bottom of the engine part where the oil pan's going to mate. We're also going to clean the oil pan. So we need to get those things done. Also change out all the O-rings that we're going to replace. And then we can start to reinstall the oil pump slash water pump. So we got quite a bit to do. Let's get to it. I got my siphon and a bucket of water and I'm gonna run this in through the top of the radiator and hopefully it will run through and down so It is coming through the other hose now, which is good, which means it's going through the top of the head and the thermostat. Looks pretty clear though, so I'm wondering if it all did drain out. Yeah, so the water coming out of the top portion looks nice and clear. I don't know if it's in the camera or not, but I can see it from here that it's clear, so. It is good. All right, while that drains, let's go ahead and clean up the oil pan. All right, now we're gonna clean the oil pan up. You'll hear that dripping in the background, sorry, but we're gonna clean this up now. We're gonna use a razor blade here and just scrape all the old gasket material off. But first, I'm gonna pull this gasket off because it is still stuck on here. Hopefully it comes off nicely and we don't have much cleaning to do. One good thing about the OE gaskets, the Yamaha gaskets or any brand, they're usually pretty high quality and they don't stick and leave a bunch of crap laying around. So toss that to the side and let's go ahead and clean the rest of this up. All right, most of the gas material just came off nice and easy. Get some brake clean and I'll spray it on a rag and then I will wipe down these edges and we will clean up the inside of the pan as well. All right, it feels pretty smooth now. I do want to clean this oil pan up because on the bottom there's a bunch of gooey oil stuff or chain grease or something i can't tell so i want to clean that up and get this thing looking nice so all right now that the oil pan surface is looking pretty clean let's go ahead and clean out the inside and clean off the bottom And I just saw that the oil pan is chipped. And I don't think that was from me, unless that did happen when it fell. Maybe we'll have to look in the footage, but uh, thankfully it's not gonna do anything because it's right where the little cover for the drain plug is. All right, is it perfect? No, is it better than it was? 100% almost, so. Probably gonna run with it here. All right, let's go ahead and clean up the bottom of the engine now, now that the oil pan's looking pretty good. All right, again, now I'm just gonna use a razor blade and I'm gonna clean off the metal surfaces. That way, our gasket has something nice and clean to mate to. <laughs> now that it's dark, <laughs> people are going ham with fireworks. 
Now that this surface is looking pretty clean, I think we're actually going to call it a night. So on the next episode, we'll be reassembling everything that we took apart in this video. If you like what you've seen here, please hit that like button and subscribe for future videos, and also to see if this actually takes care of the wine noise. I'm super excited to find out, so I can't wait to get this thing back together. But until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching. Peace.